15-hour shootouts, Philadelphia, New Orleans, Los Angeles, San Diego, the frame-up of hundreds of Panthers across the country on ridiculous trumped-up charges. I was arrested. I was 19 years old. We were the first Waco. The New African, New Bethel incident, when the police came in, uh, the Detroit police came in there to try to shoot up. Everybody in that church, men, women, and children were having a peaceful demonstration to try to kill them. They were shooting under the pills. They were shooting the little children, running and crying. There's nothing to me has, has been more painful out of all the people I know that died in, than those comrades who died out here in the streets. There is nothing, nothing. In 1970, my good friend Julio Rodin of the Young Lords Party was killed in the New York prison called the Tombs. If they were doing it in Vietnam and it was um, perfectly legitimate to go out and kill as many Vietnamese as one could, uh, or Viet Cong as one could, then uh, why not kill enemies in the United States? Today, a judge set Newton free on $50,000 bond to await a new trial. Newton's last trial and manslaughter conviction were overturned by a higher court this year, so now he'll be tried again. And in the meantime, he is out on bail. He is back on the street. Before Newton got out of prison, the founder of the Black Panther Party sat and talked about his plans for the Panthers now. Uh, I plan to uh, go on with our, our expansion and also to, uh, to make even a stronger tie with the uh, struggling people of the world because they represent two-thirds of the people. J. Edgar Hoover today characterized the Black Panthers as the most dangerous and violent prone of all the extremist groups now active in the United States. They were forces at foot trying to undermine the relationship between not only myself and the leadership of the Black Panther Party, the national leadership, but between the various forces within the Black Panther Party who wanted to make the Black Panther Party more responsive and democratic, and those who wanted to maintain the Black Panther Party as an extension of, of, of autocratic control of a central committee. The central committee of the Black Panther Party, when I come out of jail, I reorganize it again. Huey then was actually opposed to this. I said, no, we have to have a broader central committee. Because when I come out of jail, Huey was sitting there with him and David. He went to jail, and Elaine Brown and a couple of other people and said, this is our central committee. And I says, Huey, this whole uh, supreme commander crap has got to go. And these are the private conversations I had with Huey, you know. So my point becomes, he was trying to absolutize himself. We had, we had felt that... Um all the contradictions that was happening between David Heyer and all the other people in the party, the central leadership and the breakdown in centralism and all that, would be resolved when Huey came home. When Huey came out, uh, Geronimo remained a member of the Central Committee. For whatever reason, uh, Huey, uh, after he got out of jail, uh, he wanted to have the total control of the party, but the way the party was set up with the Central Committee, uh, that was uh, impossible. Uh, Geronimo, being one of the strongest uh, personalities on the Central Committee, uh, just had to be eliminated. It was around this time that Elmer Geronimo Pratt uh, was, um, was captured and branded as an as a, um, agent by David Hilliard and the Central Committee of the Black Panther Party on the West Coast. Of course, this was a total fabrication. Geronimo was not an agent. In fact, the um, the individual who pointed the finger at Geronimo and declared him an agent, Melvin Cotton Smith, was himself a police informer, an agent, who was assigned to Geronimo by David Hilliard. A split apparently is opened in the leadership of the Black Panther Party 
On a San Francisco television talk show, Huey Newton, in the studio, talked with fugitive Aldridge Cleaver, speaking by telephone from Algeria. Cleaver said a purge of Black Panther members is tearing the party apart, blamed it on David Hilliard, and demanded the ouster of Hilliard as Panther chief of staff. Many of those confrontations, both on the West Coast and between the East Coast and the West Coast, happened because of the COINTELPRO program, what they called Program Brown Mail. They would write to one person and sign their letter. They would write to another person and sign each other's person's signature. And it really cracked the Black Panther Party in two by creating two factions. All of this was happening at the same time that Huey Newton was planning his itinerary to come back east, and the government used the hysteria and the paranoia around these issues to give Huey the impression that the New York Panthers were unloyal to him. They wrote to people in my name, signed my signature, and these were crazy letters that were written by the FBI. And Jeff Fort got a letter from Chairman Fred. Of course, they thought those letters were from each other. And the, the tone of the letters were um, incendiary. Well, you're a punk. Uh, if I see you, I'm going to you know, shoot you. Uh, you're a coward. If you had guts, you would come down here. I mean, it was, a, it was literally an attempt by this government to incite violence. COINTELPRO was the whole cause of the split between the different faction in the party that caused the death of Sam Napier. In terms of the actual physical integrity and well-being of the Panther, Sam Napier might have been the most important person. Uh, the newspaper was the most important entity and tool uh, and institution that the Panthers had. And he was in charge of the paper. The loss of Sam Napier wasn't just the loss of a person who um, who was a paper salesman. It was like the sp a spirit in the party, a strong, positive spirit that permeated the whole party. Uh, and uh, you lost a you like a friend, a brother. Robert Webb was the ranking Panther on the entire East Coast. He had the rank of field marshal, which was a central committee position. It was an underground secret rank. The police knew who these people were. The police knew that they had orchestrated this conflict. And they gloated over it in their documents when they said that they could take credit for, for the murder, for Robert Webb's murder, and that they could take credit for the irreconcilable differences in splitting the Black Panther Party. When Huey Newton came to the Northeast, we in New York were responsible for his security. The government knew this through their agents and through the mail. They sent um, threats, death threats to Huey Newton, purportedly coming from us on the East Coast, saying that, uh, you know, we were faithful to Eldridge Cleaver and that when Huey came back East, we were going to kill him. And it was up at Yale University that Huey Newton uh, sort of like got extremely paranoid. I was told that I was suspended from the Black Panther Party for threatening his life. So life is very tough, and uh, a funny thing happened to all of us on the way to the grave. Huh? <laughs> Huey, David, sent me underground with Geronimo, but with, with no intentions of, of us being successful, but with the intentions of us eventually being killed. I think their plan was that we would be killed by the police, uh, we would then become martyrs. They would be able to raise us as martyrs and, and go on with their own program. Uh, I followed orders, did what I was supposed to. Geronimo followed orders, did what he was supposed to. And then we end up uh, being in the middle of the split between the Black Panther Party, and they use that as a reason uh, to expel us and, and, and to uh, break with Eldridge. And at the same time that this was going on, the Panther 21 in prison were contemplating writing an open letter criticizing um, the leadership of the Black Panther Party um, around various issues.